Hello, my name is Wayne Rudden, and I'm a Master Gardener with the Williamson County Master Gardener Association, sponsored by Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Today we're going to be talking about lawn management, and hopefully you'll get some information that you can use for your particular lawns. First, I'm going to share my screen, which is a PowerPoint presentation. And here we go. We've got that up, and then I'll start from the beginning. As I said, we are master gardeners. We all want beautiful yards with lush foliage. You can have these yards with proper management and irrigation. This is a golf course in College Station with a type of Bermuda grass, actually two types. The lawn, the green itself is one, and then we have the rough, which is a different kind. We just need to use the proper grass, recommended fertilizers, and irrigation for our areas. Let's look at the recommended grasses for Williamson County. These are the types of turf used in Williamson County. Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, San Augustine grass, and sometimes buffalo grass. Some may not work where others will work in your area. Let's look at zoysia grass. Zoysia grass, of course, is recommended for our area. You can see Williamson County on the map right here. There are 18 varieties of zoysia japonica and three varieties of zoysia matrella. So, zoysia grass strengths, shade tolerance, drought tolerance, cold tolerance, traffic tolerance, and low fertilization requirements. It does have weaknesses. It can build up thatch. It has slow recuperative potential. And more blades need to be routinely sharpened due to the stiff leaf blades. Also, many of the finer textured species have shallow roots, which result in less drought tolerance relative to the coarser textured ones. It needs a little more water than Bermuda. Mowing height and frequency need to mow it from one to two inches height weekly using a rotary mower. Fertilization requirements, one to three pounds per 1,000 square feet per year. Single applications of a half pound to one pound of nitrogen per 1,000 1, square feet. Our next grass is Bermuda grass. You can see it's also recommended for Williamson County. There are 20 different varieties of, for Texas. Some are just used for golf courses, but many others are adapted for our own lawns. I have shown you the 20 right here, but the two that we use mostly in this area, the Tiffway 419 and the Celebration. And these are pictures of those. This is the Tiffway with a the quarter there, so you can see the size of the grasses. You can see it's a dark green color too. Celebration is a little bit lighter green color, so it depends on what you want and how much time you want to spend working on this. Um, there are also some dwarf and ultra dwarf varieties of champion, the tiff dwarf emerald, tiff eagle, mini verde, and the tiff green. All the above varieties are installed with either sprigs or sod, except for the baby. There are also 27 other varieties that are installed by seeding. Its strength, it's very drought tolerant. It's also heat tolerant, deep rooting potential, durability, good recuperative potential, salinity tolerance, which doesn't always mean that it's close to the coast. We can have salty water in some of our other waters also. It is a rapid establishment, great and low disease potential. Weaknesses, it um, will not handle shade very well. And you have to mow it frequently, and it has a moderate to high fertilizer requirement. Recommended mowing frequency for this for home lawns weekly using a rotary mower. And the recommended fertilization requirements are one half to one pound of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet per month during the summer growing season. You can also get a management calendar of online and I'll show you where that is and later on in the presentation. Our next grass is San Augustine grass, which is recommended for Williamson County. And this is the grass that I have in my yard. 
It's a warm season turf grass that spreads laterally by stolons and is one of the most widely planted turf grass species in Texas, particularly in urban environments. This is due to its superior shade tolerance relative to other warm season grasses, as well as its deep rooted potential and drought tolerance. It also performs well when mowed with rubber mower at higher mowing. There are two other warm season species, which makes it a proper choice for use in home, home lawn, lawns. Its strength or shade tolerance, drought tolerance, deep rooting potential, and rapid establishment. Weaknesses, it does have some cold tolerance problems, disease potentials, traffic tolerance, and chinch bugs. But some of the others also have chinch bugs. Recommended mowing height for this is two and a half to three and a half inches high which makes it a very good um, mowing height and makes it feel really good when you're walking on it. Recommended mowing frequency weekly using a rotary mower. Fertilization requirements, two to four pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet per year. Single application rates should range from one half to one pound of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet applied during the summer growing seasons. These are the different varieties of St. Augustine grass. The one most widely used here is the Rowali, which you see here. It's widely available and fairly reasonable price. Amerishade is another one that is actually coming better, becoming more available now because it also has a better shade tolerance than the Raleigh does. Actually, shade tolerance is about 60%. Buffalo grass. Buffalo grass is really not recommended for this area, as you can see on the chart. And it's not uh, recommended for foot traffic, and weeds will take over and slowly go th show through the, the grass. So what is our first step to maintaining or building our lawns? Well, first we want to do a soil test. The bags and instructions about those are available from the Williamson County AgriLife Extension Office located at 100 Wilco Way in Georgetown. Or you can go online to https soiltesting.tamu.edu. You will then either pick up these at the office out there or you can get these downloaded online. This is an urban and homeowner soil sample information form that you need to complete when sending this in to the soil labs for their um, analysis for you. Of course, you have to put your name, your address, and city, and so forth. County where it's uh, sampled, and they will ask you for your email and phone number. And then you know, payment, and they'll tell you a check or money order. Uh, do not send cash. So choosing what you're going to do on this particular example, they have chosen the front yard. It's 2,000 square feet. Uh, last time fertilized, was, and then this is I previously used either fertilizers organic or not. I am growing, and you can see below on that. So go down here to the turf grasses. In this particular one, it's F, which is common Bermuda grass, and then. Rec recommended analysis, you check one of these. It's the 10 there right down here. And one is you know, the most widely used is a routine analysis, and it's $12 per sample. Some of the others are a little higher. This is a, a more micronutrients, and it's uh, $19 per sample. So you'd fill all those out, and then you would send that in. Here's the instructions also for how to collect the samples, where to collect them and, and uh, mailing in your soil samples. Once you do that, in about two weeks, you'll get back this form from them, the soil lab, giving you an analysis for your particular uh, sample. And this one, it's a future rose bed, and a crop grown is roses. And uh, this is the one that we did for uh, when we did our rose garden out there. Our pH was pretty high, it's a 7.8, When recommended your critical level is a 
So that's a moderately alkaline soil, but uh, actually they're doing very well out here. Conductivity, and you probably don't need that, but the nitrate, which is your your nitrogen, you can see in this particular one that we are short. The critical level is out here, so we're short. And they have recommended that we use a half a pound of, of um, nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. The phosphorus is the next one. We're short a little bit of phosphorus. And they have 9.9 uh, 9 pounds of uh, phosphorus for 1,000 square feet. You can see we do not need any potassium. We don't need any calcium. No magnesium and no sulfur. And then sodium is moderate, so that's good for us. We don't have a lot of that. So that would be your soil analysis. Then you would actually add these and then that should do you for a while. You recommend you do soil test about every two years. So. so how do I select a fertilizer and how much will I need? First of all, you do your soil test on your lawn or your garden, which tells you what you need. In turf, nitrogen will almost always need to be applied during the growing season. Typically, we recommend no more than one pound of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet at any time one time. Excessive ac applications of phosphorus can significantly reduce the plant growth and health by reducing available iron and zinc. So how do we know what we have in our fertilizer? Well, each one of these are standard where you have to, the uh, manufacturer has to let you know what's in that. This particular one is a 50 pound bag and it says available nitrogen is 10, Available potash is um, 10, and available phosphate is 10. So what does that mean? The analysis 10, 10, 10 is the percent of by weight of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the bag. For example, a 100-pound bag of 15, 5, 10 will contain 15 pounds of nitrogen, 5 pounds of phosphorus, and 10 pounds of potassium in each bag. Likewise, a 50 pound bag of 15, 5, 10 will have seven and a half pounds of nitrogen, two and a half pounds of phosphorus, and five pounds of potassium. So talk a little bit about irrigation. If you have an irrigation system, you'll want to conduct an irrigation audit to determine your run times and your irrigation efficiency. A lot of it depends on your soil and your soil depth. So if you may have to do several run times on yours just to get the recommended efficiency in. Irrigate only during the growing season months. Do not irrigate during the late fall, winter, or early spring when grass is dormant. Your evapotranspiration rates are low, your temperatures are cool, or when rainfall is occurring. How do we avoid weeds in our lawn? Well, mowing regularly will help that a lot. You can also apply a pre-emergent herbicide or afterwards, if they've already come up, apply a post-emergent herbicide. So where do I find the information about lawn management, weeds, insect, and disease control? You can go to aggieturf.tamu.edu. It's one for publications. And then you can click on weed, insect, and disease control in turf grass. And I'm going to show you an example of that. First of all, we clicked on Aggie Turf, and this is what comes up on the first page. You can see information pages are over to the left. So we're going to click on turf grass weeds, and it brings up the weeds of Texas turf. We have a lot of them. This is just a partial point here. So gives you broadleaf weeds, grasses and grass-like weeds, and sedges. So you can look at those and you'll have examples of what they look like. Here's some broadleaf weeds, annuals, uh, and there's also a different one, which is grasses and grass-like weeds. So that will give you examples of what they actually look like. Then you'll know which uh, pre-emergent or post-emergent to apply to your yard. Next, we'll look at insects. There's also a page for that. We've clicked on that now, and it comes up with Bermuda grass mites. 
um, then we have some other mealybugs, but mostly the stems and thatch and ours will be army worms, chinch bugs, or cut worms, of course, and soil web worms. But mostly we'll have the chinch bugs and the soil web worms. For the thatch and root, you'll have hunting bill, bill bugs, mole crickets, and white grubs. White grubs are going to be in most of our soil around here. And of course, red imported fire ants are present in all parts of the turf grass canopy, so you be careful about those. Next, we'll check, click on publications. And this brings up the first page of that. It's weed, insect, and disease control in turf grasses. Lots of good information in this, and you can go through it at your own leisure. This, this particular one is a pre-emergent herbicide for use in Bermuda grass lines. And it gives you a list of all the different ones you can use and tells you what it's found in. Here's some uh, maize weed preventers and for crabgrass preventer and many others, and then all different kinds of those so that you'll know which ones to choose. These are the post emergence uh, herbicides for use in Bermuda grass lines. And it gives you a, a lot of all those. Some of these may not be available because a lot of them are changed each year and we lose some that we can have that are used most frequently. So for more information, try Williamson County AgriLife Extension at williamson.agrilife.org. The phone number is 512-943-943. 3300. You can also go to the Williamson County Master Gardener website at txmg.org slash Williamson. We also have a help desk. If you wish to get a help desk question, you can call in and our Master Gardeners who man those help desks will get back with you. It's Williamson Help Desk at agnet.tamu.edu. Thank you for your your patience with me.